In this video, I'll review the Victron Smart Solar MPPT 150-35 charge controller. I have two of these chargers, and after using them for about four years, I'll show you the good, the bad, and the quirky. Spoiler alert, it's mostly good. And these are my Victron chargers. They've been used every day for almost four years with no problems. They're called Smart Solar and they really are smart. You can use them with solar panel arrays up to 150 volts and they produce up to 35 amps to charge your battery. So they weigh less than three pounds at 1.25 kilograms, about 5.2 inches tall, 7.3 inches wide and 2.7 inches deep. They have built in Bluetooth. They talk directly to Victron apps on your iPhone, Android phone, tablet, or laptop. These chargers feature maximum power point tracking, referred to as MPPT. This gives you the optimum combination of voltage and current, allowing you to pull the most possible energy from your solar panels. There are two main types of solar chargers available, pulse wave modulation chargers, which are cheaper, and of course the MPPT that we're now talking about. For an example, say you had a 100 watt panel. Now I'm rounding these numbers off, it's not very precise. So 18 volts at 5.5 amps. The PWM is gonna drop that voltage down to 12 volts. The current still goes through at 5.5 amps. The MPPT charger still has to drop the voltage down to work with the battery, but at the same time, it raises the amperage, in this case, to 7.5 amps, maintaining the wattage being produced by the panel, in this case, 90 watts. The clear winner here is the MPPT. And the Victron goes even beyond that with something called advanced MPPT. Uh, several things about this, it's ultra fast, so on cloudy days, when the light intensity is constantly changing, you can get up to 30% more energy than a PWM charger and 10% more than slower MPPT chargers. Many different things can affect the maximum power point, including partial shading and temperature. Now, there are often multiple power points or more than one power point, but most solar chargers can only detect one and it might not be optimal. These Victron chargers will always pick the optimum power point for the most energy from your solar panels. And for those times where something goes wrong, the Victron has extensive protection built in, over temperature protection when it's too hot, short circuit, reverse current, and reverse polarity, even in case you hook things up wrong. Now for me, this was the feature I really liked, was the super flexible programming that's built right into the apps. These three lights show you the current mode of your charger, whether you're in bulk mode, absorption mode, or float mode. In bulk mode, the charger slams the battery with maximum amps to recharge quickly. That continues until the battery voltage reaches the preset absorption voltage. Then the voltage remains constant and the current slowly drops. This allows the battery to absorb the current slowly until it reaches a full charge. Float mode maintains the battery at a full charge and equalization balances certain batteries such as lead acid or AGM. Lithium batteries, popular with solar enthusiasts, don't require equalization and many times don't require an absorption stage. And here the lights are in bulk mode and now they're in absorption mode. We'll fast forward and now we can see them in float mode. On the bottom is this rotary switch, which can choose pre-programmed battery types as seen in this chart. You can also bypass the rotary switch and just use the app to completely customize the charging algorithm. This charger can work with many different battery systems, 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 volts, even odd batteries, custom batteries like I use with my Chevy Volt modules, which use 12 cells per module, making it a 46 volt nominal battery. So it doesn't fall into the normal ranges, but by using the Victron, I can custom program anything I need. And as far as your PV voltage, 
in the morning when your PV starts first producing, you got to be five volts over your battery voltage before the charging will start. Uh, you also have to keep your total PV voltage uh, less than 150 volts. You can use multiple chargers with your battery bank. Each charger needs to be connected to its own array of solar panels. You synchronize the chargers using the smart network in the app. No cooling fan is necessary as these chargers are 98% efficient. Uh, they run maximum power up to 40 degrees centigrade or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, it slightly lowers the power to avoid any damage. Let's look at the wiring. As you can see, it's very simple. You can use up to six gauge cable. The order here is important. First, connect the wires to your battery. Here and here, positive and negative. Second, you connect the wires from your solar panels and attach them here. Again, positive and negative. And this is where you plug in the VE direct cable which in my case hooks to a color control monitor. Now the VE direct cable is totally optional. You can also get a VE direct to USB cable and hook it to a PC. And here's the iPhone app for Victron. Works strictly through Bluetooth. And as you open it up, you see all of the devices that are available. I have the two chargers and a battery monitor. We'll go into one of the chargers and it's connecting there. And you get a bunch of different information here. Up at the top, you're seeing here we've got 590 watts that's coming in. This top section is just what's coming off the solar panels. This is 92 volts and six amps. The network power is both of the chargers working together in the network. Um, down at the bottom, it shows what is going out to the battery. We're sending at 47.99. The battery's fully charged at 48, uh, about 12.5 amps. And that's just on this charger, not both of them. It's in float mode. And we'll go to the other charger. And it's very similar information. The two arrays are very similar. We're going to go to the next tab on here and look at history. And on here, you're seeing the history of the last 30 days, uh, including the yield in kilowatt hours, the maximum power in watts that you did, the maximum volts that your array put out for that day. Um, at the battery level, you're seeing the minimum and the maximum. Okay, we can view this also in a landscape mode, which allows you to see a lot more information. Okay, we'll flip it back up to portrait mode, and now we're going to go to the Trends tab. And here you can track over time a number of different parameters, including from your solar uh, panels, you can track voltage, current, and power or wattage. You can also track the voltage and the current at the battery. So we're going to take the solar panels and track the voltage and the amperage. And it starts tracking in real time right here. And you can just let this run in the background and watch these two graph. Go back to the home page and up to this gear icon, which is our settings. And the main one in here we're going to look at is the battery. At the top, you select your system voltage. And I left mine at 48. Um, it's 35 amps of maximum current which is the maximum this charger can do and under the battery presets um, you have a bunch of choices here including the rotary switch that we saw on the bottom of the unit i'm going to use user defined and then build my own uh, algorithm which is absorption at 48 and float at 48 and for example to set the absorption voltage you just click on it and then you can make changes with the plus and minus buttons I'm not going to keep this. I'm just going to cancel it out here. Now, because I'm using lithium ion batteries, I don't use any of the rest of these settings, equalization, uh, temperature compensation, low temperature cutoff, etc. Okay, we're going to go back to the main settings page. 
And some of these don't apply to this model, things like load output. On some of the smaller um, amperage uh, chargers that are out there, you can put a small DC load right on the charger. Uh, you can also run a small street light off of it and do some other things. Um, those don't really apply here on this particular model. However, the networking we can use. So all of these devices talk to each other through Bluetooth. Um, one of the chargers is automatically selected as sort of the master and the other one is the slave. They both get their battery uh, information from the battery monitor. And if we go back to our homepage here, this total network power is being supplied to us by using that smart network we just saw. <laughs> the app is also available for laptop, PC, and tablet, giving you a, a bigger view of the same information. And if you want to even track more information, then we're going to jump up to the color control and the VRM portal. And these connect with the VE Direct cable that we saw earlier. And this is a nice little box that uh, can go remotely. Uh, I remember a lot of Victron uh, equipment was originally used in RVs and boats. So this could be in a separate room or a cabin. Um, this gives you a lot of information and a lot of settings, but even more useful, it connects through an Ethernet cable to your modem and allows you to hook up to something called the VRM portal. And the VRM portal is hosted on uh, Victron's online servers and allows you to connect from anywhere in the world and just get a ton of information about your system. Okay, I promised to give you the good, the bad, and the quirky, so let's get started. For the good, these things are feature-packed, everything we've talked about in this video. Super rock-solid reliable and the programmability, which allows you to work with just about any kind of battery system. And the bad. This works best in a Victron ecosystem along with other Victron products. And it has no built-in ground fault protection device. Okay, so what about the quirky? I've encountered two odd issues that come up, not with the chargers themselves, but when they communicate with the uh, apps. Sometimes in the VRM portal, you can see here where it says last updated five minutes ago. It'll, it'll just get hung and then all of a sudden it'll pop back into real time. Also, I'm having a problem right now getting Bluetooth to talk from my Mac laptop. It still works fine on my iPhone and everything else. However, I don't think it's Victron's problem. I think it's a problem I'm having with the Bluetooth in my laptop. Also, I want to point out that Victron makes a number of different chargers. The Smart Solar has the Bluetooth built in. The ones that are just called Blue Solar, you have to buy a separate dongle to get the Bluetooth. Um, also, some of them come with uh, the kind of connections, the screw connections that I've got, but you can also get them where they come with an MC4 connection. And here's one of the chargers on Amazon. I'll put a link down below to this if anybody's interested. And there are a lot of good reviews on it if you'd like to read those. Okay, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.